Welcome back. This is Will. This will be the install video of the pump. We're going to do that, do it, take this brand new pump, and we're going to install these items you see into this pump. Um, I'll do my best to kind of hold things in a way that you can actually see it and so that you can see how we do things. The very first thing I'm going to do. This is WD-40. This is one of my favorite things. And anytime you're drilling, it's a good idea to put WD-40 on your bits. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to drill the holes we need to in this and some of the hardware items that you're going to see here. We're going to enlarge some holes in those so that we get a good fit on everything. So what we'll first do is install our drill bit. And we'll place, in this case, we'll place a little bit of a WD-40 right here on the bit here. Just a little bit. Now what we want to do is take this, as you can see here, and you'll notice there's a grease seal in here. So we want to remove that grease seal. And about probably the easiest way to do it is just take your thing right here, stick it in here, pop your grease seal out, get it out of your way. Now you can take, place your bit in. Into, into the hole. Now the trick to this is to center this. Now believe me I've been doing this a long time so you, know, so you want to kind of look at it and make sure that it's that it's that you have it basically centered in the hole. And that's pretty much where I, I got it centered there now. Okay. And so that's basically how we're going to do that. Now we're going to flip this around take the drill and we'll go ahead let's go ahead and clean up any plastic we see down in here and any, anything on the drill bit and as you can see here a nice little piece of plastic. that means that thing was cutting very nicely very sharp bit take this here get it centered in the hole basically and run it back and forth a few times and that should be all you need to do now what we'll then do is take we're going to have this little grease We're going to take the grease thing off of here. We'll go ahead and take our brass sleeve. We'll slide this in just about like this. Give it a little push. That should start it in there. And we'll just take something and we'll it usually will push in. And you can see it's, it's pretty much pushed about right where we want it to be. You can kind of adjust it just a little bit if you need to. So we're going to push it in there just probably a little bit further, not a lot further, just a little bit further than what I had there. So I'm going to go ahead and put one of these little washers on here just to kind of get a little bit better push on, the, uh, on that brass. And if you have to, Slide it in there like that. Okay, and I'm just gonna take this little boxing hammer. Okay, that knocked it back right where I wanted it. Okay, you can see it slides right in there very nicely. Right, here's the little brass piece right there fit nicely on there. And you may be able to see, you can see it, you can probably see the brass just barely, barely making its position known. Take your grease seal, and what we'll do here is we'll put just a little bit of grease on our seal here. And this is just standard, everyday grease. You can buy this at your hardware store or something you want to have anyway. If you're doing RC boats, put a little grease in there, just like that. And you'll see that when we put our flex cable in, it'll fit nicely. You may have to kind of push it through that grease seal. That grease seal is a little bit smaller than our, uh, our shaft is. So, so push it back in there. Now as you can see, that's pretty much about where we want it. We might want to come up just a little bit further than that. Probably up right in that area there. That's the clearance we want to see with that. And you'll notice that the shaft is sticking out pretty far. Okay, and so we're probably going to need to trim that shaft a little bit to install it. But we'll get to that in just a minute. We're going to pull this back out of here. And we're going to go ahead 
and enlarge some holes and a couple of things. So we'll take this here. I like to take my drill bit and just run it through these holes here. And the bottom two holes down here. And I may have done this on this one on some of these. That one I have it. So that there. And then we'll do the same thing on here. Just kind of take a little bit of material out. Okay, so that, that takes care of that right there. So we'll put that aside. You'll see that we have different kind of screws on it, so we're going to put those screws in in just a minute. So now that we've used our special drill bit, we're going to go to this smaller drill bit. And as you know, we're just using an inexpensive drill. Nothing expensive about this drill. It's a very cheap drill. So there's our brass we've installed. Okay. Now we're going to take the four little spots. Now if these spots aren't like they, this one like, like in a nice new pump. You may need to mark these holes with a center punch, a, a sharp end of a knife. But you know, be careful when you're doing this stuff. This, this is you're using sharp, you know, basically a drill bit's a knife, so you need to be very careful how you do these things. You know, if it's not something you're comfortable doing, you know, please be advised. I am very willing to do this for you, you know, and build the pump for you. And it may be cheaper for you to for me to do it if you don't have all these tools to do it. I'll, you know. It may end up being a little bit cheaper for you to have me do it. Now, what I would recommend at this point, if you're doing this, is to put the silicone up here. Okay, so what, what, I, what I was going to do here is just take my, my chisel, and this is something like, like I said, not everybody has these items, but they'll take a chisel and just kind of make sure that we kind of take off any burrs or whatnot in that little area there. And we can take our... Uh, Shafts kind of poke through those like that. Now I have silicone already kind of prepared right here, so I'm gonna take a little bit of silicone. And what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and put some silicone right in these little areas right here, right where those little holes are. And the reason I do it now is that it's actually better to actually kind of fill this area in with a little bit of silicone because it is, you, know, you want to get it kind of coming through the through the holes a little bit down in there. That will help with that seal factor, getting it into those holes. You're kind of pushing it down in those holes a little bit and just wipe off the excess. That's why I use a towel when I'm doing stuff. And you can actually see a little bit of the little bit of silicone right there. And you don't want to make a teetotal mess of it, but you know this is this is the one area you really don't notice very much from the inside. But anyhow, so now we're going to let that sit for a minute, and we're going to go to your pump. This is your thing. So basically, if you just kind of work, typically if you kind of work these away, they'll they'll just break loose. Here, we're going to take a drill bit and we're going to put the drill bit as far in. The drill is possible. Okay. And what I like to do, I'm going to drill right in that little flat spot. And what I actually should have done, start off with, put a little bit, we'll put a little WD 40 on our bit, on our bit just to kind of, it's a very small amount. And I'm kind of doing this around the camera so you can imagine if I didn't have the camera here, it'd probably be a little easier to do. Kind of bring it up from the camera so I can kind of clean this up just a bit here. It's kind of hard for me to see that. Okay. Now I'm going to drill just, just drill each of these holes right here in the. You want to kind of drill them a little bit of an up angle. They're probably never going to be perfect. It is pretty difficult to get perfect. Now, the, this, this side hole here, right here, where you're going to see where that little notch is. You're going to ha probably have to. Kind of come in a little bit of an angle to kind of get it started. 
then you want to kind of kind of straighten it out like that same thing here and if you're kind of if you I mean, if you're a clutch at this it's not a good thing to do i promise you and so i'm gonna I'm gonna have to do this a little bit off camera here. It's kind of hard for me to see what I'm doing there. But I'll, I'll, I'll show you once I'm kind of done. Okay. I had to tighten my drill bit up a little bit there if that was my problem. It wasn't quite tight, that was the problem. So, anyway, once you kind of get the holes drilled in here, you can see they're kind of, and you'll, you'll have to kind of clean them up a little bit in here because get some debris and what I usually do is I usually try to take the one of these and just kind of run just run this back through this way I kind of clean them up a little bit so I get the holes kind of cleaned up a little bit I go through them both a couple of times kind of get them worked in real good now you just once you have that drilled like that Go ahead and take these and install them. Now, it's very possible. So it just goes in like that. So basically you're going to end up with your uh, your four uh, and they may be a little bit off or whatever you might, whatever whatever it may be they you know, these things do bend a little bit so but what I usually do is just kind of hold them off a little bit to one side on the table and I'll take and I'll do my best to kind of get them lined up as best I can This is probably the most challenging part of this, is getting these to line up perfectly. Because you're kind of doing a little bit by feel. In reality, that should line up. Yep. And you see we've got them all pushed in nicely now. And when you pull them up like that, they'll actually be just like that so you see it takes a little bit just a few minutes of finagling and you can get that installed pretty easily now what we'll do is we have our motor and i should i have not installed this motor with the, any of this stuff yet so we're going to go this will be the first time you're seeing me do this too and what we usually like to do is use some loctite i'll put a little loctite right about there And my favorite little tool, almost anything I do, is a is a is a toothpick. I found that toothpicks work really nice for this kind of stuff. So we'll, give me just a second. I'm gonna find a 1.5 millimeter wrench and our Allen key or whatever you want to use. In fact, there's actually a 1.5 Allen key that comes with this. That you will probably need a two and a two and a half millimeter as well so getting a set of these is for any if you're doing rc work this is a good thing to have so we'll just kind of put a little we'll just dip that in today in this bring bring your set screw down until it uh that's all the way down so anyway bring this down until it makes contact with the flat spot in your shaft i usually like to back it out just a hair and i'm actually going to put one on the other side and this what this does is it just kind of gives it's a, it's a good way to kind of center uh, your uh, your your motor shaft and, and your coupler. Um, it's not necessary to hold it in place. It just you know basically what I like to do is I like this goes in. And when you feel it stop, just stop right there. Come back to the other side and just bring it till you feel it kind of get tight, and you're done. That's basically all you need to do. Now you'll see that this is a new shaft, and we have not done anything with it. So what I'm going to do is take. So you can see this is not that difficult to do. Take our drill bit. 
And by the way, this would be easily done on with Dremel tool, so I'm gonna be straight with you. I usually find this a little easier to do. Okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, I'm gonna be putting my motor screws in this hole and that hole. So I'm gonna take this and we'll run this up. And I'll put a little bit of material out right, 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 right in that center portion. And if you just kind of hold it in the center, Taking a little bit of material um, here and here, and so what we'll do, we'll take our motor, we're going to place our motor in here, and what we're looking for is our 19 millimeter holes. Now this one's actually on the other side, but I'm just, well, we, we can move that wherever we want to. But uh, what I'm looking to see is that my holes. I'll put this in here about where I need to be and they're not quite there yet so I'm going to go ahead and adjust that off. I'm going to put it on the other side. On, the, on, my, on, mine, on mine I'm a little bit on the other, I'm actually on the other side so I'm going to do it on the other side. Kind of work it, just kind of work your drill bit back and forth in the center. Like that. That'll get, enlarge that hole a little bit. And what we'll try to do is we'll install and I'll include these are actually six millimeter length cap head screws. And so this is where our toothpick will come in nice and handy. So what you want to do is take your uh, put your screw like that and just bring this over to here. Like that. Start it. Take our other six millimeter cap head screw. Put a little lock tight on it. I have a hard time holding on to these hands myself. I got big fingers. I want you to do you want to kind of look through there and kind of get it lined up, and it'll tighten right up. And you want to just tighten them each each up a little bit, you know, even as you can, and it should center that nicely in the. In the end. Now you'll notice this particular uh, coupler is, is it has a pretty tight fit and if it has a little bit of a wear in that's fine. We actually want this coupler to be as tight as you know as big as possible to give you as much set screw threads as possible. So we're going to tighten this up a little bit more. Let's say there's your motor and uh and um, that's, that's basically how that will be. This I actually had this motor turned around the other wrong direction, but that's fine, just like it is there. Uh, we could actually rotate it the other way around if we wanted to, but it'd be fine. But you'll notice that about, and I'm going to show you this, this is about where the flex cable would, would go in. So you're going to notice that if I put the flex cable in, and we'll put the flex cable in the hole. And we're doing this kind of dry at the moment. Slide, it's going to slide back and you'll see it won't slide all the way back but about that far. So what it tells me is I need to take off a little bit of, a little bit of a material, you know, a little bit of the flex cable off. And I think it's about probably, and I'm going I'm to do something kind of high tech here, break out the calipers. And what I, what I can see here is, I'm, I don't, and I'd want to come out to you know, this section here, so I want to come out to about there and I want to come out a little bit further than that. So we can see that's about eight millimeters. So technically speaking, we could probably come, you know, it would that that right there would be. You know, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to cut this 
about eight to eight, about probably about nine millimeters off of this and come right back. All right, the magic of flex cables, I'm back. And as you can see, we have a slightly cut flex cable. And I'll just show you, and I've actually kind of just chamfered a little bit on the edge. So, and you can see it didn't fray or anything like that. And we're gonna slide it back, and as you can see, actually that's absolutely pretty much perfect right there but nine millimeters and so we know pecking nine or ten millimeters off of that would be perfect for most uh end runner motors so that's exactly where we want to be so we're gonna take a couple more set screws and put them on our 1.5 yep kind of lost the set screw in the in our nice sticky <laughs> thread locker over there um, so we'll bring this down we want to bring it out till we fill it just kind of touch rotate it around to the other side just like that we'll kind of push it through there so I'm not getting it stuck there anymore bring this in and you'll feel it touch bring this in here get a little bit less a little bit more and bring it here just a little bit more and it, it, it'll, it'll actually go in, go in there pretty good this gets good right there we can take our grease seal push our grease seal back like that and that, that that that's how you now you'd want to grease that before you ran it, but that's just to give us a good test fit. See how that to the how that fits in there, okay? And so you you'll see here if I loosen this up, about a full turn on either side, like that, cable slides right out, and you should be able to see that it actually bit them. It's got some grease in there, but uh, I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> anyway, that's the whole my hands. Uh, plastic, <laughs> a little bit of plastic there uh, was actually in there. So yeah, so you actually can see. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. There's actually a little spot on the flex cable, but you can see this flex cable did not fray or anything like that, and it fits nicely in there. So what we'll do now is we will grease our cable. A little grease on this cable here get it good and greased up and this actually will come grease when you buy it I mean if you buy it from me it's I'm, I'm gonna put grease on it before I ship it to you so it'll, it, it will have grease on it when you get it all right okay go ahead and, go ahead and put our foot or put hold our grease seal back there yeah, sometimes it's a good idea before you slide the grease out, just go ahead and slide there. Put your uh, Okay, that's good right there. Nice and solid. And uh, yeah, that looks really now this will break in a little bit when you when you go to put your your stuff on here like this. So the next thing we want to do is to insert some screws in there. So we're going to take our uh, two and a half millimeter like this, and just so you know, if my battery dies on this thing, I'm going to re I'm going. There may be a jump cut in here somewhere. I might have to recharge the battery. So I don't have another battery for this particular camera. You want to just kind of start a screw like that in there. So this is this is a couple places you want to start some screws in. Just kind of get a, what I do, like, I kind of, you let's see, I'm kind of angling, I just kind of start the screw at a, at a slight angle that gets a screw to bite in place, and that will actually make nice new tight threads in there. Down here on the bottom, here, on these here, I've got these th these uh, stainless steel screws, and the reason we use these is that I think they look nice, frankly, but, uh, so we'll take our, uh, here, these have never had any threads in them, so that's why. And you just want to start a screw in each one of these just to kind of get them started. Because when you go to install this in the boat, uh, you don't want to be struggling with doing this. 
Now it should also add the eight holes you have in the boat, right, actually about nine holes you have in the boat. You can use these screws in it. I'll give you some extra ones in the kit. You can uh, use that drill bit just to kind of enlarge those holes to make it a little easier to get all these screws in there. So, by the way, I should add, these are stainless steel. And stainless steel, people, sometimes we don't know this, it's not magnetic. So, believe it or not, these screws are staying on this bit because they're good screws. They have, you know, these are kind of a cheese head, what they call a cheese head screw, but sir, I guess they're either, they're either considered a pan head or a cheese head screw. Um, but they're, they have a nice deep uh, Phillips. So we're going to start these in here just to kind of get thread started in these hole in these new holes. So we put them together. Now we'll go ahead and remove these screws here. Just like this. Okay. And we'll put where is our so play this is the one we put our yep made these holes nice and bigger much a little bit bigger than we did before so put that in there line up our holes and take our take this here which i believe we made those holes a little bit bigger and place it on here now this right here does when you if you were to tighten this up here you'd probably get a little bit you know, so you want to make sure you keep that a little ways from there and you could actually test do a test test run on this you probably want to break this in because this right here I'm sorry this right here is going to go into this here and it may touch the plastic so it's better to back that off a little bit when you first fire it up kind of let it run through and you can put some silicone on in each of these holes and put the screws in there and that'll give you a nice good seal but we'll do that on the actual installation to the boat but that's basically it for installing this into you know, the kit into your jet pump but uh, that, I hope that is explained pretty well to you and uh, there's a lot of ways you can do that but that looks really nice and solid and that was all done on video the only thing I didn't do on video was cut the shaft with a with a with a cutoff wheel because I don't have a cutoff wheel right over here with us otherwise I'd have done that but like I said if, if you're gonna run this motor I'll cut this 10 millimeter shorter if you're gonna run an outrunner motor with a water cooling plate I'll you can use the full length it should be perfectly fine um, but yeah, there you go. Now, let me say one other thing. This motor here is good. This motor here, not my favorite. You can run this at 2S LiPo and it runs fine, but it is less efficient than this motor. This motor here actually runs longer, runs cooler. Uh, the only thing I recommend, recommend on this is probably running a better ESC, but this motor here actually draws more amperage in most situations than this motor does. You know, this motor is running at a higher voltage. Higher voltage, lower amp, same watts. But uh, so this is about a 600 watt motor or so. This is probably 150, 200 watt motor. So just to give you an example, this is a much better motor, and this is probably the way you would want to go. Uh, but this does rotate however you want to put it. I just got that one kind of. This was actually siliconed in place, so that's just that was just there to show you. But for the most part, you should be able to, uh, get, you know, that little seal area there. Just make sure you get. Just make sure you seal those up nicely. Um, and you should be good to go. So I'm hoping this this narrow headed video wasn't too awfully confusing, and uh, you got something out of it and as to how to upgrade your jet pump with my kit. And um, I enjoy making these kits. I enjoy doing this for you and making it hopefully as simple as possible. I also notice when you put this in here, you'll notice this actually sits a lot. This actually will sit flatter. This will sit a lot flatter. This actually holds it in there. It's nice and solid. And by the way, this is these are stainless steel. This is not uh, galvanized. This is not linkage wire. This is a special wire that I've sourced and had had made just for this project. So you're getting really good, high quality stuff. The last thing I'll show you is the um, is putting your uh, pickup in there. I'll do that real quick for you. We'll take our drill bit. You want to make sure when you put this pickup in there, you don't get the pickup in front of that screw hole, otherwise you'll really have a problem. You want to put it about right here. Let me see that right, about, about, about right in there. Just start your drill. Goes in there nicely. And 
you just take your uh, your little uh, brass pickup, push it in. It should it should just kind of push in. Well, just so you know, my camera died right when I was showing you how to put the this in here. And what I usually do is I'll clean that area that you see right there with an alcohol swab and then take a little bit of super glue on the end of a toothpick and just run my run it right around the edge of the that making sure that I've got it angled right and then you have that will make for a very nice water pickup and that's all you need is that little bit inside there that will pick up plenty of water now let me show you what else we like to do here um, on these holes up here these are three millimeter ten millimeter length screws what I like to do is go ahead and start those through here, make sure that they fit through and they're not gripping or anything. You want to make sure they just slide through there. This is the other factor of why you want to make sure you have clearance on that screw. So it's, sometimes it's a good idea. Not, I've been doing this for so long, I know where I need it to be, but as you can see it just has just a, just a little bit of clearance on that on that water pickup. Okay, probably a pretty tight clearance, really. I'm probably going to have you no know, it'll probably be a little fun to get the um well, I did have some water cooling tubing around here somewhere. I don't know where I put it though. But anyway, but if you're putting water cooling tubing on here, you know, like this, as you can see it will it'll still fit. It'll just be right there next to that screw, so that's fine. And of course that camera doesn't have it glued in there yet. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to just take that out for just a moment. I'm going to show you how we uh, do this. So we also want to make sure that our screws will go through this plate here as well. We want to make sure they're going through here, you know, without actually gripping into there. And the reason that is, is easy. they're gripping a little bit, but not too bad, is we want to make sure that our, our screws here go through these components with that but but they're not actually you don't want you don't want them threading into this here that's something that I found was kind of a bad thing about that so um, and they're threading in there a little bit too much take your bit just run it back through there a little bit a few a few times kind of run it through until you can get it kind of just kind of still yeah just basically still so they'll slide through we want them to slide just yeah, just like that. Now, because what you're wanting it to do is you want them to grip into the holes in the pump here, not into these parts here. So we'll go ahead and put it back correctly. <laughs> Add it backwards there. So line up our holes like that. All right. We're going to go ahead and put it on our bushing and put our holes like that. So I'm going to show you how that goes in. And you'll notice that once you do that, those threads you started will grip right into there very nicely. We're not going to tighten it up like crazy. And remember we talked about down here, we have these smaller screws. They're going to go right through into there. So push this up like that. We'll grab a two millimeter and we'll tighten this up and you'll see that as soon as these two screws go in we'll run them up just flush we're not trying to tighten this thing up yet we don't have it in the, in the boat yet this is what secures this so you'll see that's nice and secured and so the pump is now done it is completed in here so this is a good test fit it's a good time you can kind of run this in um, you may feel it's a little tight here because it's probably gripping inside of the uh, inside of here so what you want to do is kind of loosen this up a little bit kind of get it kind of loosened up a little bit there just kind of so everything you know, will we'll run kind of will basically run smooth here Sometimes it'll, what, it, what it wants is it wants to grip the end of the uh, behind the sort of I guess you say behind the bushing, and that will uh, kind of work like that. 
what I like to do on, at this point is to hook my motor up and we'll make sure that we're, we're I'm just using a little test ESC here we'll plug it in plug it into a little receiver um, I'm gonna grab the radio real quick grab the radio we'll grab a little 2s lipo battery and we'll just kind of see uh, no it's actually and it is it's going the right direction we've greased it and everything yeah that'll kind of get some break in there and it'll It'll, it'll run very nicely once it gets broken in a little bit there, but that's exactly what you want to hear. Uh, you may hear a little bit of chatter on the plastic here. That will break itself in fairly quickly. It's just, it is, it's a, it is a nice tight fit. Well, that's what we want. we want. We want these to be as heavy duty as possible. But as you notice, I got the motor back in a straightened position there. So this will conclude this part of it the next part of this the next video will have me putting it in the boat right there we're gonna put it in that boat you know with the big hemi engine on the back of it and i'll uh, i'll try to explain it i wish i had more of those little engine things to put on the t on these boats that's something i did actually my uncle did and uh but uh as you can see we have a completed uh deal here with our i'm gonna put a little water pickup kind of Making a little hollow. Well, we'll get that glued in there, and uh, it'll be ready to rock and roll. But that looks absolutely wonderful. I got to be honest with you. That's for for me trying to do this on video. <laughs> that's pretty good. So if you order a pump with a motor, this is basically what you're going to find. You're going to have bigger, heavier duty screws, all stainless steel. Everything's going to be ready to go in the boat. And I'll show you how we silicone this and put it in the boat and get it secured and uh, sealed up and I'll even show you how you leak check a boat that's another thing too that many of you probably are wondering you know what's the best way to check for leaks in a boat I'm going to show you that little trick too it's flawless tells you exactly where the leak is instantaneously and so but have a nice day this is Will signing off to y'all and we'll be uh, back uh, the next video will be us putting this in the boat and the electronics. I'm going to go get the electronics ready and we can rev it up. And uh, then the video after that, we'll take it out and put it in the lake and run it. So have a good day. And this is Will signing off.